Welcome to tutorial number 7 of Introduction to Statistics. In these tutorials we will study how to test a research hypothesis. For example, are those tutorials helpful in any way to my students? Historical mean of on standardized test is 83.72. I would like to check if something is happening if my students study better by watching all these video tutorials. So I will plan a study. We'll state a null and alternative hypothesis before any other actions. Null hypothesis. The treatment has no effect on performance. In my case, my video tutorials don't help my students at all. The historical mean continue to be the mean of the population. Non-directional alternative hypothesis. The treatment changes the performance. The, the new mean of my students will be different, and I'm not saying better or, um, or worst. First of all, when I am testing hypotheses, I have to decide how would I know that my treatment or whatever I do on the population really has effect that I prefer to have on this uh, population. So I have to plan how I will check my null hypothesis, how I would, will test my null hypothesis. I will accept certain uncertainty. Alpha level is level at which my null hypothesis may be true, or maybe not, but it may be even true, but I will re reject it. Because this alpha level, the white area on this picture, is a very small probability. Now, in education, this probability should be less than 5%. What does it mean? It means that to the left and to the right, we will have 2.5% error eventually, or may not have 2.5% error. But I will reject the null hypothesis if the mean of randomly selected sample translated into z value is under the white area so to the left or to the white and uh, of the white area under the white area if the z of the random sample goes under is so unlikely to happen by chance i will consider that this is not the same population that my tutorials in this case or any kind of treatment kind of contribute to a change in the population. If we know sigma, how to calculate z? Well, critical z value, I can use the table, Excel or applet to calculate the z value that divides the area of acceptance of null hypothesis, the blue area, from the area of rejection. At 5% level of significance, Z critical is 1.96 and negative 1.96 to the left. If I don't know sigma, but I know that the population is normal and my students definitely are normal, then even for a test that is less than 30, which is the critical number for um, Z, te Z test, um, I, I may have 15, 20, 10, n equal. I will calculate degree of freedom and level of significance, maybe the same. We'll use the applet, Excel, or the table, and we'll calculate the t critical value. This is the critical value that is on the boundary between area of acceptance, the blue area of null hypothesis, and area in which. I will reject the null hypothesis. As you can see, t-critical is a little larger number than z-critical, so we have to have a, a better difference between the mean and uh, the, the new mean of the random sample. So this is the formula. Select a random sample, calculate x-bar, Ma subtract mu, which is the mu from the null hypothesis, in my case 83.72 or 3, <laughs> divided by sigma root square of n. You know that sigma over root square of n is the 
sampling distribution, the, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution according to central limit theorem. Also, you know that the mean of the population according to the central limit theorem is the mean of all random samples if you construct the, the mean of all means of these random samples. And this z-test should be outside of the area of acceptance of the null hypothesis. t-test is the same, but we don't know sigma, so I will estimate sigma with the standard deviation of my random sample. Everything else is the same. So how will I test the null hypothesis? Well, after I calculate the z-test, I will look whether this z-test is less than z critical as an absolute value or in the critical area or in the area of rejection on the other side. And now let's see how I can do this with Excel. So I have my null hypothesis and it is that the mean of the population is not changing at all after all these video tutorials and I have to calculate the first the critical z value and I will put norm this means normal distribution as inverse of 0 0.025 and I will calculate this negative z critical because this area to the left of negative z critical is exactly the rejection area negative 1.95 and on the positive side I will round to negative 1.96 this is how everybody knows the critical z value at level of significant alpha equals 2 times 0 0.025 or 0 0.05 z test now pay attention to this formula now we will put this formula with this data in Excel equals sign x bar is 88.51 minus um, 83.72 this is my numerator divided by let's now open the parentheses for the denominator 11.32 divided by sqrt of the number of individuals in my sample 30 and as you can see 2.31 is much more than 1.96 reject the null hypothesis with knowledge that at I have 5% probability of null hypothesis still to be true but I will reject it because of this alpha level the same if I don't know sigma don't know sigma but I have s of the random sample so critical t value is formula is t inverse dot 2t which means 2 tail 0 0.05 I put the whole alpha level and 24 is degree of freedom because I have a smaller sample of 25 25 minus 1 is 24 so this is my t critical a little larger than uh, the z critical t-test, this is the formula for t-test it is equal x bar which is 88.32 minus 83.12 divided, this time instead of sigma s 11.12 divided by square root sqrt of 25 close parentheses, close the denominator again t-test is larger than the, the t-critical 2.06 is less than 2.38 and what is happening in both cases I am in somewhere in here is my z and my t is also outside in the white area so I will reject the null hypothesis have a great day and thank you